Welcome to the Krista Escamilla Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's show. I'm so excited that you're spending some time with us, and I hope your day is treating you well wherever you are. I'm so excited about today's guest. We are here in Midland, Texas, with John Scarber. Now, John is the owner of Midland Meat Company and the Half Acre. And if you've been in West Texas, you've probably heard the Scarber name. John, thanks so much for being with us today. You bet, Krista. Thank you for having me. Well, you know, it's so interesting the history behind your family i mean y'all have a school named after you a sports complex um let me think what else a foundation uh a drive a draw (laughs) am i I missing anything (laughs) well we've been here for a while so after a while things kind of add up and you know my family's always been big in supporting midland and helping midland and that's that's kind of that's kind of what i'm trying to continue to do too and Obviously, with Scarber Foundation, they do great work in the community, not just in Midland, but the Permian. But so, yeah, it, it's it's a long-standing name here. We've we've been in Midland, I guess, since around 1885, and wow. Midland, I want to say, became a city in 1886. So, wow! So, so before it was a, a city. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a fifth generation Scarber here in Midland. And I was going to say you're a fifth generation rancher and the ranching is really how, and, and if, and if my memory serves uh, incorrect, please correct me. But the way you, that the Scarbers got here was from sheep, correct? That, was, that is correct. Okay. Yeah. The, the original Scarber came to John is his name. I'm just having to be named. I was actually named after, um, would have been my granddad's brother. Not a lot of people knew he had a brother, but, um, John and his brother Christian is who came first. In 1883, wow, came from down from our our family originally migrated from Germany in the 50s mm-hmm. up up to New York, and then came down in the 1800s, obviously 1883 to be exact, to Fort Worth, and then followed the railroad tracks west. You know, you see the movie 1883, the show. Mm-hmm. They went the other route. They they went you know up trying to go north and west, but we followed west and. Um, made it to Abilene and that's kind of where things started in a way right um, yeah started with sheep um John was uh, waiting tables at a hotel there he had a side job trying to earn a little money and um I overheard a couple of sheep ranchers talking about the business mm-hmm. and were a little upset on the price of the market and um you know he just kind of said hey what would it take to to buy you out and he had a couple thousand dollars in his savings, I guess, which back then, that was a lot of money, but he carried it with right. him because he was coming down here to get in the business. And he bought him out. Yeah. And um, a few years later, well, the next year, the market flipped, and um, he became one of the largest sheep runners. He came west a little further, stopped in Marionfield, which is now Stanton. Okay. And, right down uh, the road. If right, yeah. Know. And realized this country was better for cattle mm-hmm. and the cattle ranchers around here you know they they kind of told him the wolves and the coats yeah. were a problem on your sheep and um, in the late 1800 or 1888 or 9 he was responsible for the largest livestock transaction he sent 49,000 head wow. of sheep on, by train to Chicago oh and at that goodness. time was the largest transaction Right. But he, he was doing that to get into the cattle business, and that's that's where the Hereford cattle came from. We brought Herefords in and kind of started from there. Right. Now, let's fast forward to 2022. I, I, I want to hear your story, John, because you really have done so much uh, recently with Midland Meat Company and the Half Acre. I want to know kind of how you got to this point, um, you know, kind of carrying on that legacy with your family and really keeping those Midland roots strong. Yeah, well, and here's here's the thing. I, I was born here in Midland, mm-hmm. um, obviously being a fifth generation here. But when I was in 87, 1988, uh, my dad moved us up to Amarillo. <clears throat> but I spent... You know my school days up there and mm-hmm. then i went to tcu and graduated there with t- uh, tc ranch management and um, go horn frogs yeah <laughs> <laughs> went back up there to work on one of our ranches and then dad sent me down here and i was i was working under ken albus and i was at the uh, north curtis and it was in 2008 or 9 is when i kind of started my own cattle business and um, kind of went a different direction um, bought a different kind of bull searching for a heifer bull to breed my heifers i was trying to get a black calf and that's where the 
the Wagyu came into our deal. And, and what um, is Wagyu? What? Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear it all the time. I, I see it is, I mean, it is, it, it is one of the things that is asked the most whenever I'm out to eat and I'm a vegetarian. Don't hold that against me. But when, when, when I'm out to eat, I always hear, yeah, you my, feel my free. He's a busy gets, guy. Well, my phone gets, <laughs> I've got a little league game tonight. I think my, my coach is, is blowing me up here. I was going to say, you got it, family first. So you got it, if you need to take care of that, John, you go ahead. No, you go. I'm going to throw it over there on the chair. And, but I hear Wagyu whenever I'm out to eat and people are like, oh, I got to have that Wagyu. What does that mean? Well, Wagyu is just, an, it's another breed, kind of like a Hereford or an okay. Angus, and um, they, they originated in Japan, uh-huh. um, known for like Kobe beef or Kobe beef. It's the same breed that creates that. Okay. Um, Can I, you tell the difference when you eat it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. It's known for its tenderness, its marbling. It's it's some of the highest grade, well, it's the highest grading beef in the world. I okay. mean, it's, there's, the true Kobe from Japan is, it's, it almost is so rich, it doesn't taste like beef. Okay. But what I what we did and what I did was I was trying to get a small calf and that was the whole point. I wanted a black calf because at the, the 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 Angus have done such a good job of marketing certified Angus beef and mm-hmm. black hided animals. So we were breeding something that was throwing kind of off colored calves, and I wanted a black calf. So found the Wagyu. Throws a little calf, and you want that with the first calf that a heifer has that mm-hmm. the cow has. It's a heifer. It's considered. You know, a little education in a bovine, which is a cow. Um, a heifer is any female that has not had a calf. So oh, okay. when I say a heifer, I'm referring to the first time that we breed the animal for okay. a calf. See, so, you learn something new every day. I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. So anything that's had a calf is now considered a cow. Okay. And then on the male side, you got a, a steer, which mm-hmm. is a castrated male, which okay. that's, you know, and then a bull, which mm-hmm. is usually for breeding purposes. But anyways... That was the point of that. I was breeding the Wagyu's for a low birth weight and get a black calf to market. Gotcha. And um, really, I kept some meat just because the amount of money we were getting premium, when I say premium, added 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 to what we were getting. Okay. So like with the market, we might be getting 10 or $15, 100 more just because they were Wagyu. And gotcha. on a 500 pound calf, you know, that's... Seventy-five dollars, right? Ahead, so I mean that's a that's a big deal in the cattle. But anytime you can make a little dollar in the cattle business, because it's, it's tough down on the cow calf end. It's every dollar matters. I think that wagyu's making some dollars because I was in Vegas recently, and I think it was like three hundred dollars for some wagyu. Yeah, and does that sound about right? <laughs> yeah, and that's that's funny you say that because my wife Amy and I we were we were in Las Vegas in two thousand I don't know twelve or thirteen. Uh huh. And um, I saw the same thing, $40 an ounce wow. for the Wagyu. Mm-hmm. And I took it. I didn't really want to order it because I don't really eat other beef. Right. And I didn't want to pay $160 for, you know, whatever, six ounces or four ounces, whatever it was. I don't blame you. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so, but we did just because I had just harvested a couple of my Wagyus. Uh-huh. And I, eat, I ate some. And... When I ate the one, we were at Nobu, uh-huh. and I ate the one that I, that was 40 an ounce, and I just took a bite, and I looked at my wife, and I said, our beef's better than this. Oh, that's awesome. If they can get 40 an ounce, surely I can market our beef, and Midland needs something like that. Oh, okay. And, um, and now, Nobu, you should call the yeah. Midland Meat Company. Yeah, and no, get... it's all right. I <laughs> that, no, I mean, that's great that yours tastes so well, and that you can tell the difference, because well, I think that's important. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it does add a little extra up to it. Um, you know, Midland Meat Company, that kind of got the the fire started. Okay. Because I realized, you know, we, we, we've we got something here with the beef. Right. And my dad was always, he introduced Angus cattle to our herd in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And his goal was to improve the beef to what he always called white tablecloth, mm-hmm. which, you know, more high-end restaurant, like a prime steak. Right. And like a Nobu. <laughs> yeah, or any, you know, any, yeah, anything right. where you go to eat a steak. Right. And um, that was the meat we were trying to produce with our Herefords and our Angus. Okay. And um, but the meat store, you know, it was, it was a lot of things really. I was I was watching the markets and the trends of ranching mm-hmm. and being around it all my life. It was the same, the same uh, problems mm-hmm. around the breakfast table, you know. Everybody went, you get any rain, you know, so weather, 
Weather is one of three major parts of our industry. And if you're not from West Texas and you're listening to this, we don't get a lot of rain. That's that's correct. <laughs> this is a problem, right? And that's why, you know, our ranches in Midland, when we settled around here, and at one time we had seven ranches just right here around Midland. But due to drought and different things, we were forced to go out different places and look for places. And so that's why today I just have a ranch, one north of Midland and one up in the Panhandle. Okay. So they get one, a little more rain, right? Yeah, they, they're a little better off. Okay. A little better country, and they we're, it's not subject to drought as mm-hmm. bad as this area. But um, you know, not to not to bore you with that, the 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 cattle business is really made up of you know three things: the weather, the markets, and management. Mm-hmm. And a rancher can only really control the management. Yeah, that's true. The Can't market, control the market you know, or the a, weather. It, it's a commodity, and then the weather is the weather. And yeah. so I wanted to kind of tilt those things. Right. And plus, I, knew, I saw the need in Midland. And it, and honestly, the real reason I feel like it's kind of my calling. I'm, I'm kind of put on earth to feed people and do this. I and love that. It's kind of the way I was designed. And, and um, you know, I feel like it's my gift and what I'm supposed to be doing. And you're doing a great job of it. And it's, it really is an amazing um, store when you walk in. But you're building an even bigger one I saw behind, right? There's, no, yeah, it's it's I built. Mean, we, we opened Ready to it, open? Yeah, March. Uh, I get, uh, the opening day was March 14th, I believe. We've been in now two or three weeks. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. That's awesome. Yeah, we went. I actually thought my old store was 1,800 square feet. Mm-hmm. But I just looked at the survey, and it's actually 1,200 square feet. Oh, wow. So, so you were doing all that business, which was a lot of business out of 1,200 square yeah. feet. What's your space now? Yeah, we ran, and I, I kind of try to do the fuzzy math, but I think we pushed in six and a half years close to 5 million pounds of my beef through that little store. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and um, the new store now is a little over 5,000 square feet. Wow, and that's incredible. Yeah, we, we, we've gone from, you know, 300 feet of retail to about 2,700 feet. And really what the, the purpose of that is not that, you know, we want to grow into something mega huge. That's not our goal. never has been. Mm-hmm. Um, my goal, one, is to move all our beef. Right. And because that's, that's all I'm doing. I'm, instead of selling my cattle three days a year, now we're, I'm selling them 365 days a year. Right. My, my biggest goal is to move, move the, cattle. the beef. Okay. And um, I process uh, so many a week, so every week it's fresh coming in. Um, and plus now at this new store, we, we, we carry such a variety now of not just, you know, obviously all the beef in there comes, I supply 100% of our beef. Mm-hmm. Now we, we've, got high, we've got the best of the chicken, pork, seafood, oh, wow. all those things. I, I try to keep the standards of my beef, so it's got to be high. And Quality is is what we strive, and all natural to something I really care about is no hormones, no antibiotics, right. no steroids. All that goes into my beef. I'm I'm real particular on that. I don't we don't do any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, same with my chicken, pork, and all that. So, what's the biggest thing you've learned going from rancher to business owner? Because I know, uh, as a business owner myself, I know there's woo. We call it the roller coaster. There's highs, there's lows, and there's something new every day, right? There's some something presented. I, I don't want to call them problems. We, we'll call them challenges. Right. Uh, what do, What have you learned the most making that transition from a rancher to business owner? Well, the you know obviously, like I said, when I was selling my cattle live. I was dealing with one or two buyers, mm-hmm. and it was, like I said, two or three times a year, two or three days a year. Now I'm dealing with, you know, I think we, we do anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 transactions in a week. So we've got wow. that, many, that much interaction with different buyers. Mm-hmm. So obviously opening up to the public has been a, was, has been a learning curve. Mm-hmm. But I try to run my meat shop. Um, very similar to the way I run ranches. When we're, we're not going to cut any corners, mm-hmm. you know, we're not going to, we're not going to lie about what we have. Right. And we're just, we're going to be as honest as we are on the ranches. And the, and that's why I love the ranching industry. I think it's one of the last true um, industries where a handshake and honesty still, uh, still exists. Mm-hmm. And um, neighbors still help neighbors. Um, you know, there's, People aren't competing. Your your neighbors aren't competing with each other. They're helping each other. Um, you don't have people, you know, trying awesome. to take your bull or something. Right. You know what I mean, I mean, they're, they're, it's a gentleman's. I mean, it is. It, it's, it still it, is. Kind of like golf. It's a gentleman's game. It is, and you know, there's there's unspoken rules, and most cowboys understand them. Yeah. Um, but 
the biggest change I've seen in the meat world is a little more cutthroat. It's mm-hmm. a, it's, it's more business. You know, obviously the guys trading beef, they're working with margins. They're having to buy, and that's where I'm. I can. I've, I've cut. I've pretty much eliminated the middle. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, because we're start from finish, from from producing a calf to feeding a calf to harvesting to to cutting it in the meat store, yeah. and so we're kind of, you know, dealing. And that's actually I I like being around people, um, mm-hmm. talking to customers. I like learning what they like. And we, we've liked it. You like educating. being in the store. You like being in there. I like being there. in the yeah. store just because I like to sell somebody or not sell somebody. Just everybody knows about like ribeyes, fillets, mm-hmm. strips, tenderloin, you know, um, well, fillet, that's fillet, but the, all the main cuts. Right. But me, if you come in there and I say, hey, have you ever tried this Delmonico or this Denver steak or this Picanha steak? They'll be like, what? What's that? Exactly. <laughs> and you can find great cuts. Yeah. Because there's great cuts on these beefs. The problems with the major supermarkets, they just don't, they don't deal with those cuts. They're right. only, and so. I only well, see ribeye, yeah. tenderloin. I mean, that's about, about it, but, you know, yeah, I and, see it there, out there. But people have really come to love all our off cuts because yeah. our beef is good. I mean, I'm going to say it's, it is what it is. I, I spend a lot of time and effort making it, trying to get it there. Uh-huh. Um, we go the little extra mile to do that, but, um you know, just dealing with the people. And then our team, I mean, middle of me company, I'm, we, I couldn't do what I do without the guys we've got and the girls we've got. I mean, you know, I think now we're middle of me company employs maybe 30 people. Wow. That's awesome. And when we started, you know, it was three. I mean, I remember my first hire, Adrian Vargas, he's, he does a, a tremendous job running the store. And then obviously the ranches, I've got three families on, on the ranches and, we're, we talk uh, daily, if not daily, weekly, and um, everything that goes on on the ranches. And we're about to start branding here at the end of April. I'll have nine or ten days of branding calves in the panhandle, so I'll be up there. Mm-hmm. But I still got all the works. You know, there's some things I miss that I, I can't be at, but mm-hmm. for the most part, um, you know, involved in every every step of it i love that i think that's important as a business owner to see everything happen from the from the bottom up and like you said when there was three to now 30 um 30 plus really there's yeah. there's so many more and i think that's what makes a great business and like yours i mean it really is i i've i've gotten to watch it bloom over the past six it's been six years you've yes, been open, uh-huh. and i think that's so impressive um it is time for our quote of the day so we're going to take a quick break so here's what we do john you get to pull this out of here. Um, you go ahead and pull one of those out. For those of you that uh, are watching on YouTube, it is also the Masters Golf Tournament today, and John is a big uh, he's a big golf fan like I am. So we're going to get an update. Let's see who's leading. All right, Cameron Smith, go Cam. All right. Six, yeah, he's doing good. Six under. Wow, that's incredible. Way to go, I'm Scheffler. And Tiger, where's Tiger at? Let's see. We're going to have to go to uh, – I don't think he's in the uh, – He's he's not in the top ten there well, right now, I mean, but there he is. Look, look at that. What is one he? Under. One under. That's not bad. He didn't play golf in two years. Oh, it must be nice to not be able to play golf in two years and go out there and at Augusta shoot one under the, the Masters. Yeah. <laughs> What's your lowest round, by the way? I know this is so unrelated to what we're talking about, but I know you're a big golf fan. Well, I, yeah, I like to golf. I, I joke. <laughs> my, I haven't played since September. Uh huh. And I have a tournament coming up at the end of this month, and so um, I got to go find my clubs. Yeah, but <laughs> that's number one. Oh, find oh, the clubs, then find the swing, right? Yeah, work's, <laughs> work's been pretty busy trying to get everything going, but my lowest score ever is a seventy-seven. Nice. Yeah, and that's for me. That was pretty good because I didn't really start playing golf till after college. Yeah, that's and good. I, I'm I was happy, but. It's been a long time since I've gotten close to that. Right. So I'm, so. <laughs> I'm usually mid to high 80s. Okay. I was going to say the, the goal for this next term is 80s. Yeah, I'm, I'm shooting for 80, 81. Right that, in there. That'd be awesome. Well, good. Well, good luck. I know you're going to do great. Oh, first, first, find the clubs. All right. So to, you're, you pulled the happy. He pulled the happy card. And your quote is, there is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path by Buddha. What, is that, what does that quote mean to you? It's a good quote, by the way. Well, I mean, every, you know, what, I've, what I learn is happy everybody's happy is different i guess true true um obviously i think some people take some things way too seriously Mm -hmm. so um i don't know we just need to chill out a little bit and like it and um 
not throw try, it. try to be happy because things seem to work a little better when everybody's happy don't they i agree i agree <laughs> I, just, I just think the light that that the, the world you know goes better that everything from from your business to your family when you when you have a grateful heart and you wake up with little you know hey it's gonna be a great day compared to um eeyore you know it's gonna be a great right. day well, that, first, <laughs> that first thought out of bed is usually pretty important so you know and it, and what's, what's helped me on that happiness and with this business is you can't control everything. Yes, so true. And once, so you, true. once you accept the fact that there's some, a lot of things out of your control, then, you, you, you know, it's hard to get mad about. And especially the last couple of years, it's mm-hmm. been, you know, with, this, with the pandemic, yes. there's been so many, I don't want to say built-in excuses, but mm-hmm. running a business and trying to operate the way we do and having... You know, everybody on the other line, well, you know, everything's backed up. Well, you know. and it, yeah, Supply chain. A guy like me, that's hard to hear because mm-hmm. I, I like to go. Right. And so, it, you know, it's it's taught a little patience, but yeah, it's, uh, anyway, just be happy. I like that. Don't worry, be happy. That's right. Yeah, that's a good motto. Do you have a favorite quote that you live by? Oh, I don't really. I'm 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 full of a lot of one-liners, I guess. So it depends on what the if what we, the day if, brings. If we me. asked your wife, what's the 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 favorite one-liner that you uh, say all the time? What would she say? I don't know. I think I tell my kids it is what it is a lot. Okay, I like that. And just deal with it. It is what it is. That's right. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think that's a pretty honest statement. We used to say, "Get what you get and don't throw a fit." Yeah. Yeah, there, there's you something else to the back of that. Again. Yeah, I think there is too. <laughs> we don't have to say it now, though. <laughs> but no, I think I like I like that. It is what it is because really, you can't. I I like to like not have too many expectations, you know, because I'm just like, well, you know what? It, what whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I, it, all you can do is control what you do and your your thoughts and your your positive attitude. All the rest is uncontrollable. You can't do anything about it. Yeah, I mean, you got to understand there's there's no neutral moments either. So like yes. what, what I'm doing, you know, to me, it's a calling. Mm-hmm. So I rely a lot on prayer and things. So yes. I'm, I'm, if things become too hard, I'm probably not supposed to be doing them. That's a good, that's a good And point. so when I'm in line with God and Christ, what I'm supposed to be doing, things seem to yes. work. And that's kind of, that's what I lean on. And that's kind of the way I go. I love that. You mentioned your calling. And I think that is going to lead into what I want to talk about next is your philanthropy, because really it is a calling. And you, uh, you not only are, you know, a business and you're supplying and you're helping others, uh, you know, at the dinner table at night, they're coming in and buying the meat, but you're also very philanthropic and you give away and donate a lot to some of our wonderful organizations, West Texas Food Bank, uh, Soup Kitchen, Breaking Bread. Tell me a little bit about your, you know, your goal behind philanthropy. Well, I, you know, I, I feel like I'm supposed to be feeding people one way or the other. Right. And so we have we have certain things you know obviously we do things in our store like for our ground beef for instance i don't i put one day shelf life on it mm-hmm. it lasts more than one day but i do that because every day we freeze it and we donate it mm-hmm. um i know you know and we we don't talk about a lot of the stuff we do away from the store right because we're not we're not doing it for that i know i know you're not and i'm sorry for bringing it up well, but... no it's fine but... <laughs> no but i just wanted everyone to know how giving you guys really are well we we try to help you know there's causes that that are near and dear to my heart mm-hmm. i'm ex- and you know i'm always going to support anything faith-based and and trying to lead kids to christ i'm, I'm big in that um i like um you know feeding people i feel like it's i think i think food is important and every, I mean, yeah, people think they need money, but until they go hungry, it's, you know, I've kind of been on both ends of that and being hungry, you got to eat before you can, you can heal and do anything. Absolutely. And, and before you can hear the word or do anything, you need to be full. And so, yeah, the, you know, the soup kitchens, breaking breads, places like that, since we, since we've been open, we've done our best to keep them from ever having to go purchase meat. So, That's awesome. you know, we, uh, I don't know what the number is, but I know locally we probably are responsible for feeding anywhere from 400 to 700 families a day. And that's, that's, just, that's, and that's, that's just from what the food banks has relayed to mm-hmm. me. I don't, you know, those things, I don't know, it's, it's, it's tough because you just, you gotta, you, you gotta feel it and what's right. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that come to us and ask us for things. And that's where I've got to use discernment and figure out, you know, what is this for? 
and right. what is it for the right reasons and and that's 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 kind of what goes into it you know we our our half of beeves that's something that we like to donate for some of the charitable events um the make a wish um event here i guess a couple months ago our, our half of beef auctioned off for fifteen thousand. Oh wow that's we've awesome. had them go as high as thirty thousand. you know that's just a donation and then people are generous in midland because mm -hmm. midland is a very generous city it and, really and is. always has been it's it kind of relies on its p it's kind of the, the people are the backbone of this area i mean we're not relying on outside resources midland right. and you know the whole area the Premier basin kind of carries itself mm -hmm. and um it's it's neat to go and know that yeah it's just a, it's just beef because i mean we my family we talk about this it's 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 still the same black baldy calf mm -hmm. that we've raised forever Right. But just seeing it affect and, and be able to go into the community and, and help, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's, it is, that's, that is rewarding knowing that we're making a difference. I know you're very humble about, about, about your giving, but thank you. From, from a fellow community member, I see what y'all do in the community, and I just want to say thank you. No, you're welcome. Because we're... it truly does make a difference in so many families' lives. And as we know, the pandemic hurt so many more families and so the need yeah. was even bigger and y'all were able to serve that well the the west texas food bank it i mean you know we're just a little blip on the radar the places like that i mean those guys they they do a great job they do. And when i hear the numbers it yeah. just blows me away mm -hmm. when you're when and the one out here services like i think 17 or 18 counties or something like that it's a large spread one of the biggest in texas Yes. And, um, I want to say hi to Craig and to Libby. Yeah, the they're, 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 they're crazy. Yeah, they're good people. I saw <laughs> Craig that night at dinner. And, um, but we're talking millions of yes. pounds a month that they do. Right. And it, it's amazing what they do. But, um, you know, if we're just trying to do our part and not let anything go to waste. So um, we're going to switch gears just a little bit. Um, I want to know what are the books you read, do podcasts. What what are you into these days, John? Well, uh, books. I don't know. I, I'm I'm into a couple right now, but you know, I'm I'm more on faith based books. Probably my the, probably the the single most important book to me that probably changed my life was Wild at Heart. Okay. Um, I read it you know 15 years ago or so and it kind of changed my life. So that that changed the direction. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm in the Bible quite a bit, but. You know, if, if I have time, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm more of kind of book on tape and just go. Yeah. Um, when you're driving to the ranch, kind of. Yeah, around. it's my days are pretty busy mm -hmm. um, between work and then I've got four kids. Yes. And we're all busy. My oldest is 13 and I've got two eight year olds. So we're we're squeezed right in there and they're all doing something yes. somewhere on the opposite side of town. So. Right. Or, or the country. I think <laughs> yeah. you had one in, in Florida. Was it Florida? Yeah, we had it? a volleyball, <laughs> went to Florida and it's kind of funny because we get all the way to Florida and end up playing the Midland team. Oh, that's, that is funny. Yeah, that so is really it's funny. not funny for us. <laughs> right. When we're sitting there, right. But. We were like, really? We drive, we are not drove. We flew all the way yeah. here. We could have done this back in Midland. And my wife and, and my wife, Amy and Mabry, they went, and me and the other three stayed home and but it was, it was good we we had some stuff to do here so uh, yeah I just stayed busy between you know the the store and the meat shop and the and the parenting because parenting is a full-time job in itself oh yeah what is what is your best advice to uh you know future dads or, or fellow dads out there on balancing it all because um we have four kids too so I know <laughs> I know what you're going through because yours are younger uh, and they're all going a different way how do you balance it all well I mean if a you know a working dad and I know t in today's world you got both parents are working a lot mm -hmm. and you know I I something and I try to do and it's not always easy because you are rushing around a lot right is take that 10 or 20 minutes on your way home and just kind of chill out a little bit mm -hmm. and don't you know don't dump that stuff off on your kids and on that's your wife a, that's good advice and, and, and it might just that be, three hour meeting you don't yeah. want to dump that, yeah. <laughs> that three hour meeting out on your wife and kids when you get home yeah <laughs> turn on your favorite music and drive around for a little bit yeah preferably not in the city limits because right. somebody's probably going to cut you off and you're going you're to go right back to that place good point <laughs> but but yeah get out you know take a little time take a little breath because your kids want to see you come through the door and and you need to be there and be happy happy that's right <laughs> and say don't worry be happy yeah. <laughs> I love that um I want to know 
you know, we're, we're, we're getting close to time running out and I had so many more questions. So we're going to extend this a little bit. We may go a little over 30 minutes, but I want to know what do you hope is your family's legacy when, you know, generations to come years later, they look back on what you have done with Midland Meat Company and with the half acre, we haven't even talked half acre yet, but, uh, the half acre, what do you want your family's legacy to be? Well, my, my personal, I mean, we're not, you know, I don't really, we're not, I don't know. I really thought about that Mm -hmm. because I'm not, I don't really do anything for a legacy. You know, we, we just, um, the past is something and it, it, if you're not if you're not learning from the past and looking at it like I, I respect my past and my my heritage and where I came from mm-hmm. but at the same time you know just like every family there's there's goods and bads mm-hmm. it's not you know it's not all roses so right. um, I think my legacy what I want to leave is that people say that he had a heart of Christ and that's what that's it you know and and I think when my kids you know, I, I hope that me and my wife are raising them correctly in the right way. And, you know, I think, I think your kids are your legacy if, and, you know, hopefully, you know, they, they make the right decisions and go on, you know, Midland Meat Company, I feel the cattle company is something, um, it's just like when we, the first of the month, or I guess it was March and the the cattle company was inducted into the Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame. Yes. Congratulations. You no, know, it was a really neat honor, mm-hmm. but really i didn't really know how to accept that um and my dad me and him went and i said dad we got to give a speech and we got to accept this and i said he and i said you you go up there and you talk and he said well i'm going to talk and then you're going to talk uh-huh. and i'm like well we only have three minutes and neither one of us are good at staying under three <laughs> minutes or anything so. yeah, three minutes is not a lot of time but, <laughs> so but, what'd you say but what i what i what, what i realized there and what i've known is i'm not trying to stay in the past Mm -hmm. and you know my dad there has been a transition in the last four or five years from him to me in this in our company Mm -hmm. and so it was kind of neat to see the history but it was at the moment there I kind of said you know that's the past and Mm -hmm. here's what we're doing that's awesome we're going to continue what we're what we've done for 139 years in the ranching industry we're going to we're going to keep the integrity of our family and our business doing it the right way mm-hmm. and and hopefully and with Midland Meat Company you know now it's not just a ranch right. it's there's there's marketing there's there's all sorts of business mm-hmm. there's branding i mean our you know there's and i mean you know about that it's mm-hmm. and it's just the future i've with my four kids being the sixth generation and it just get it just I you know our motto is kind of leave it better than you found it. Love it. And in my family, that's kind of tough because every every generation's done that. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, they set a, the bar high is what you're saying. Yeah, the bar <laughs> set high. So work worth it. Work ethic is something that was kind of bred into me. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, God's first and my family second, and that's just that's how I'm going to keep going. And whatever my legacy is, is what it, people want it to be. I'm not real interested in that. I'm just trying to kind of, you know, I don't want to look too far in the future. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of in the day. I like that. I can tell that about you. Yeah. You, yeah. I mean, you, I you, I've got a plan in the future yeah. because everything I do in the ranching, this, even that steak in our, in our meat shop, it takes nearly two and a half, three years to create mm-hmm. from the time I breed a bull to a cow to the time that steak ends up in my shop is about a three year process. Wow. So you've got to look ahead. Mm-hmm when it comes to markets, but that's, that's business. That's not my life. Right. And like I said, as long as I'm doing what I feel like I'm called to do, I feel then if I get led a different direction, then that's where I'm going to go. But right now, this is what I feel like we're supposed to be doing. You're doing a great job of it. Well, thanks. Absolutely. There's a lot of people behind it too. It's not just me. Right. The the, the team, the team is doing incredible. Really quick, the half acre, what is the half acre and where can people find it? Yeah, And and the new building. The the new meat shop is it's, it's right directly behind the old one. So Mm -hmm. I'm actually keeping the address because I'm going to use that old building a lot of different ways. And I have some, I have some I have some ideas for it, but so at 2705 Big Spring is the meat shop. Okay. You just, it's, you can pull around, but now it's kind of behind it. Right. You can't miss it. Yeah. You can see the sign for sure. Yeah. And, and then the half acre is something that we, we started two or three years ago. Mm-hmm. It, it was really just a concept to, you know, on the lines of, of the waste, like outdated product, being able to utilize it. Mm-hmm. And, and so we wanted to cook. 
we're responsible for, you know, our, our meat has won over 500 first place briskets in the competition world in the last wow. six years. That's incredible. And yeah, three, I mean, three world championships. We've won Houston a couple times, and all these big comps. So, like, our, our meats are kind of, people want to eat them. Right. And we've got great cooks, um, so we utilize them both mm-hmm. and then getting our food out to the public. And so, and if that's you all go, done at the half acre. It's all, and yeah, and that's over at 1101 uh, Washita, and we're actually adding on to it right now. So it's a little construction site over there, but we're open for lunch. Okay. Um, Tuesday through Friday. And whenever that uh, pavilion gets finished, we're going to extend our hours and open into some nights and some stuff. But Great. So yeah. check it out uh, if you're in town. And if you're not in town, come to Midland. We're a great town. Come see us. Yeah, come, come check it out. <laughs> All right, time for, for the question of the day. And then we're, right. we're, we're, we're going to wrap things up, John. Yeah, go Sitting here today with John Scarber, the owner of Midland Meat Company, a uh, fifth generation rancher. And oh, I love this. You got the invent card. All right. Your okay. question is, and the reason why we do these questions, because I want, I want our listeners, uh, my husband and I come from that growth mindset. You should always be learning and growing. And, and so we've just thought, you know what, let's all think about this question for yourself and what your answer would be. What modern day advent invention could you not live without John? Which one? Oh, I hate, I mean, I even hate to say it. <laughs> But it's pretty. It's pretty easy for me, and I I I, I do hate to say this because it can almost borderline be a problem. What is that? Is my phone? The phone. Yeah. But, I think we're all then. That I think we'd all agree that's probably one of the the biggest. Yeah, problems. I mean because it's you know right before I came in here, I was on a Zoom conference call, and then, it, and I say it more for business. Just right. You know, growing up, my dad. I remember when he got his first cell phone, mm-hmm. the box phone. Oh, yeah, I and remember. And when, when it rang, the horn honked. Mm-hmm. And then we had to figure out how to discontinue that because every time <laughs> that happened, the cows came to the truck. Oh, that's funny. So, because <laughs> we'd be out in the middle of nowhere and horns start honking. And they're like, what is that? They'd come to it. <laughs> <laughs> but just on the business end of it, it's it allows you to do a lot in a yeah. day and you don't miss stuff. Um, but I, I wish sometimes they just throw it in the water and yeah. it disappear. But... I don't know if that's a good invention. You Probably know, not. It's a love-hate relationship, I think, with the phone, you know, <laughs> because it does. It helps us. But then sometimes you can think, you know what? I got to put it down, listen to the kids, what well, they're saying. You know, that's that's what I find myself. And it's down. It's, it's one of those yeah. things where it, during the day, though, it allows you to be at multiple places at one time. And that's, that's, the, that's why I, it would be hard for me not to have it. Yes, um, for sure. I don't know whether or not it's, you know, I... I don't know. Yeah. Another well, invention I couldn't really one. live without. I'm, I'm pretty simple. Yeah. I wear the same clothes, you know, all week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a whole lot <laughs> to make it. You know, that's a good sign, actually. I read this because I tend I tend to go to my, I call it almost my mom uniform. It's like jeans and a black top yeah. and flip-flops. Like, you'll usually see me in that. But I actually read something, and it's, um, was it the founder of Facebook? It's either Facebook or Apple. I can't remember which one, so don't quote me on this. But he wears the same shirt every day. And someone said, well, that that's actually a good sign because it's one less thing that you have to think about every yeah. day. And so a lot of business owners actually do the, what you're saying and wear the same thing almost every day because it's just one less thing to think <laughs> about that day because you're so busy with all the other stuff. So that just means you're a you're a top CEO and you're doing the right thing. Well, I'm, so I'm good doing job. that with my vest. <laughs> I, I, we have a joke, and I own more vests than I do anything. Really? And me and my buddies we laugh we think vest season is the best season it is i and agree with i you. will string it out till like 90 degrees oh that's funny i will be in a t-shirt and a vest before i'll take my vest off that's funny and then and then i go into a like slight depression that i'm not in a vest <laughs> until it finally gets cold again i'm like i can put on a vest You're like yes it's vest season <laughs> so again I love, yes <laughs> i mean i do i love a vest for the pockets and that's everything funny. else but no that's that is that, that is it's that kind is of part funny. of the uniform absolutely all right if there was one thing on your bio or that's not on your bio uh about you besides the fact that you love to wear vests yeah. what, what would it be Oh, gosh. I don't know. I mean, um, on my bio. Yeah, I mean, someone's just, reading a bio or they're Googling your name because, you know, you pop up. You know, what would it, and it's not on there. What is it that you'd have to really know you to? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I've kind of, me and my son, we've kind of gotten into trading baseball cards again. Oh, cool. It's kind of fun. That is fun. Fun thing for y'all to do together. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it's kind of taken a full circle. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I like to fish. I, I don't, I, Crazy, 
as much hunting as I have, I'm not just a huge hunter. Uh-huh. I like to guide hunts. Okay. But I don't really prefer to hunt. Okay. So, I mean, that's something people, you find, when you own ranches, you get a lot of friends in August. Mm-hmm. They start calling you about <laughs> dove season. season. Yeah. <laughs> and so, it, I don't know if it was just part of that. You're just kind of like, you kind of get a little, you know, yeah. you'd rather be doing other things. All right. But... I don't know. I'm no, pretty that's boring, cool. I no, guess. No, you're not. I, lo- I love that you're trading b- <laughs> baseball cards with your kids. I think that's awesome with your with your son. Yeah. Um, really quick, last question. Is there anything that you uh, were hoping that we'd maybe talk about today or ask you before we wrap things up uh, that you want, you know, just Midlanders or, or really, you know, the, hopefully the world, hopefully the world's listening uh, all around the world. We actually had a download uh, in Chile yesterday, so that was pretty exciting. Oh, so, yeah, we're expanding. Uh, but, you know, is there anything that you'd want the listeners to know about you, your family, Midland Meat Market, anything that we've talked about today? Um, your golf game? No. <laughs> Just, my golf game's pretty bad. I'm, I'll be honest about it. That's I can laugh about it. Mine is awful. We always tell we always tell people don't judge us our golf game by our kids' golf game because yeah. our kids are a lot better than we are. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really throw my clubs because I, I don't have any reason to get mad. I, I go out there knowing that I'm not going to do that great. Right. But anyways, no, I mean, um, you know, middle of me company. We strive. We want people to. You know, if they care about what they eat, and right now with the markets, what's what's going on in the mm-hmm. the food industry, and I think the 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 food shortages that we're going to see here in the next three to six months, mm. um, you know, and I I hope that other ranchers, um, you know, my my goal is to kind of be an example for other ranches, and I think I think in the last few years you're starting to see it, mm-hmm. where more ranchers are wanting to take their product to retail. Um, just because the industry as a whole has gotten so hard. Mm-hmm. So pe- I want, you know, people, if they're really interested in what they're eating and putting in their body, you know, know that you can come to our, and, and you can trust what you're eating. And the beef is, you know, we're going to, we're going to stand behind it and all of our stuff. And if you're, if you're in healthy, feeding yourself healthy, it is what it is. You're just supporting a local rancher who's supporting Midland. Yeah. Really. I mean, we're not, we're, uh, you know, I got to tell people we're not a non. We, we are a business, right. but that's not my primary goals. Right. Um, we want to we want to serve the community, and and that's what we're going to continue to try to do. Well, you're doing a great job, and we appreciate you sharing today. It was so nice to get to know your story a little bit more and uh, just just why you do what you do, and you really are. You're following your passion and your purpose, and I think that's fantastic because that's all any of us. That, that that's I think that's the goal. You know, God God has a plan for all of us, and you're definitely living yours out to the fullest, and I, I thank you from our community. So well, thank you. Thanks for sharing. We do a share the love at the end. Is there a local nonprofit that you want us to give our donation to today? Um, you know, I'm a big supporter of the Life Center. Okay. So uh, wonderful. If you want to, if you want to help them out, I'm, all right. I'm I'm good with that. I'm going to put it down right now. We will send that donation on your behalf and our show's behalf. So thank you so much. We appreciate the time. If you would like to support this wonderful local business, all you have to do is uh, I believe you're on all the socials, Midland yeah, Meat Company, yeah. and uh, or just just go down Big Spring. You can't miss the big building. It's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, once again, we appreciate you sharing today. Thank you, John. Well, Krista, thank you. And remember to hit the subscribe button. We appreciate all of you following the Chris Escamilla show. If you would like to reach out to me because I have loved getting the nominations from all of you on who you'd like to see us interview next. I think that's fantastic. Keep those coming in. Follow me at LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at Krista Escamilla, and we will definitely reach out to those people and have them on a future broadcast. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Remember my mottos. Can't miss it. It's right here. Dream big, believe in yourself and never give up. You make it a great day. 